and Matty Warren Luff, who won yesterday's race, will start from pole alongside the reigning champ and the points leader, Craig Baird. But Warren Luff yesterday, Brad, did everything but crash over the top of the mountain on the last lap. He came home to win his first career, a cup race, and he's in a really good spot here to win the round. Any time you beat Craig Baird, you're doing a fantastic job. And uh, Luffy left nothing on the table yesterday and uh, pretty lucky to get away with that one, to tell you the truth. Now, tyres is an issue here. They're all on the Michelin control tyre. Now, both Warren Luff and Craig Baird are running used tyres on the left side of their cars, fresh tyres on the right side. Nick Perkett's running with used rubber from race one earlier in the weekend. Michael Patrizzi, let's keep an eye on him. He's on all fresh rubber for tyres that have done very little work. Here's the points. Baird leads 75 and a half clear of Nick Perkett with 60 points for a race win in each race in Carrera Cup. Warren Luff, he's still in the game. Stephen Richards a bit too far back now because there's just one round left to go in a fortnight's time on the streets of the Gold Coast. So Craig Baird is aiming at his fifth record title in this all Porsche Championship. Max Twig here trying to win the elite class for the third straight year. He'll line up from position eight, but Adam Gowans, the former Aussie Racing Cars champion, the Team Kiwi car, has come into the elite class and given him a run for his money. Absolutely has. Had a fantastic lead on him yesterday. Great little paddle out of Adam. He's uh, spent a lot of time in little Aussie Racing Cars and he's a good operator. So, final race. Nine laps. Nick Perkett, of course, teams up with Garth Tander today, trying to reclaim their mountain crown. Remember that Nick won the Dunlop Series round here last year. He crashed out of the main race. Redemption is on his mind in the main race this afternoon for the Holden Racing Team. The top four of the top five drivers on the grid will be in the main race this afternoon. So this is the entree, the curtain raiser to the big one. The Porsches back at the mountain. A couple in the back of the pack who don't look to be in their grid boxes too no. well. So Luff versus Baird, Perkett and Patrizzi. Stephen Richards next in the laser Porsche. Great to have Carrera Cup back at the mountain. Even start, rear engine cars really sit and run towards turn one. Baird's got the jump, oh. he gets across on Warren Luff. Patrizzi and Perkett get together and that will open the door for Shea Davies to drive straight through to third place. That has just ruined the race for Patrizzi and Nick Perkett. And it just goes, these cars are so close, you know, you really want so badly to get, get a good spot. And um, what hurts you here is if you don't get a good run out of turn one, then you pay the price all the way. Oh, Steve, Steve Richards. Richards, big move on Shade Davies, there's contact. Yep. And the Queenslander is run wide. Patrizzi is back down the gap to make back one of those spots. But the first two, Baird and Luff, are clear. But this is an animal pack here. They're all over one another. They absolutely are. Richards third, Patrizzi next, then Davies, Adam Gowans in the Team Kiwi 21 car, then Max Twig, but the top two are clear and they will fight for the race and the round. Perkett is buried in the pack. There he is. Well, he had to get right out of the throttle and not turn Patrizzi around and uh, it's hurt him. Hurt him a lot. Across the top is where these cars are so fast. Great sticky Michelin tyres, aerodynamics, the layout of the car, classic Porsche, and they keep developing these new Carrera Cup cars more and more each time they bring out the latest version. We get another new model next year, but Craig Beck, there's a bit of debris on the exit of the elbow from the V8 Utes earlier on, so we'll have to be mindful of that. First time down Conrad, though, and it's Craig Baird leading the way from Warren Luff. This is Stephen Richards, remember. He teams up with Mark Winterbottom today for the Pepsi Max crew. The boys at the Holden Racing Team watching on. James Courtney, Garth Tander and Leanne Tander as well. Mm -hmm. They're enthralled, don't they? Murph's, really intelligent Murph's not even watching. He's wandering <laughs> away. <laughs> End of lap one. And Baird has control. Remember, he teams up with Lee Holdsworth in the Ewan Mercedes for Erebus today. Since we saw him at Sandown, he's been in Singapore at the Grand Prix with the Asian Carrera Cup Series. Replay the start with Perkat, the co-tire Porsche from third on the grid. Look at Michael Patrizzi on the left of screen. He's trying to he's, squeeze across. Yeah, he's, There's the rub. He's just run a little further in there under brakes and then turned in. And uh, oh, I thought that was a bit harsh. You could have given him a little bit of racing room on the way into there. This is another great move from here by Stephen. Watch his contact with Shea Davies. Just a little bump. Push a Shea out of the way. The camber rolls off that corner, so. 
And really, Stephen didn't have much room to move. You're turning in from a very narrow point at that that corner, and, and when you apex, you're going to have to run wide a little bit, and then just a little touch with Shea and pushed him out of the way. There's Jay Davies, P5 in that 88 car, Max Twig, to the Champagnacci in the 10 BRM car. And they've really now settled down into a little bit of a rhythm. Luff starting to just chip away a few tenths from Craig Baird. Of course, Luffy will team up with Craig Lowndes for Red Bull Racing Australia. Runners up at Sandown, third here at Bathurst last year. They're a big chance today. This is Max Twig, Permagard Porsche with Padiachi behind. Remember that there's two fights in Carrera Cup. The professionals have their own fight. The elite class drivers, essentially businessmen and amateurs and enthusiasts and the like. Don't be fooled, some of them are actually really good racing peddlers. And the amount of air that's running over that rear wing. Oh, what a great angle this is. See. They just dab the brake on the way in, lift off a little bit and then back on as you're going through the chase to pull the car down. You want to get on the brake a little bit as you're turning in there to keep the car settled so it stays nice on the road. Got Warren Luff slowly chipping away here at Berto. I think he's, uh, he's just, just needs to get a little bit closer to him and then the race will be on. Remember, as we mentioned at the start of this race, they're both running with the same tyre strategy for this final race of the weekend. New fastest lap with... Stephen Richards, 211.73. We jump aboard Nick Perkat. The triple two Porsche is back in position 12. And that time around at 216. Let's jump aboard, have a listen and a watch to the former Bathurst champ at work. which is a little slower than we'd expect him to be. I'd say that car from the contact earlier has been hurt a little bit. Maybe it's towed the steering out a little bit at the front. It's, uh, it's just not quite where it should be. We see him get past Kelly there, but normally we see Nick doing the same pace as the leaders. And um, he's not quite up to it at the moment, so it's more than just being stuck in traffic. He, uh, he just doesn't seem comfortable in that car. And the amount of steering movement you see when he's using on the wheel there just makes me think that it's not comfortable inside the car at the moment. And with the greatest respect to Paul Kelly and Damien Flack, I think even by their own admission, Nick Perkat and that co-tire car are a much faster proposition. But clearly, there was almost a look of resignation in his, his um, 
that in-car shot at the top of the mountain in his body language and the way he's driving the yeah. car. He wasn't hustling, he wasn't no, really you, getting after it, was he? You're expecting to dive down into the cutting and, and really, really push on through a couple of those corners. But speaking of pushing on, we've got Warren Luff here who's just slowly, slowly pegged Craig Baird back and he's in a position now where he's ready to attack. So he, he'd be at a point now where Craig would be looking in the mirror about every second or third corner just to see where Warren is and... Uh, work out how he can block Luffy and stop him going by. Well, I've just been doing some numbers and if they finish as they are, Luff will win the round, so he doesn't need to make the move to win the race. That actually doesn't normally stop race car drivers. Right? No, never has, never will. It's all about winning every race. You're only as good as your last result and uh, the result you're looking for is a win. They might have the situation too if Bed can win this one with three different race winners over the course of the three this weekend, Nick Perkat won race one yesterday, then Warren Luff won race two and looks pretty pacey. Lap time check, 11-4 for Baird, 11-4-2 for Luff, 11-3-9 for Richards and 11-2-0 for Michael Patrizzi. So it's much more even in pace today. Yesterday, Baird, Luff and Perkat drove away from everybody else by pretty much a second a lap, but that's not the case today. As Patiachi tries to move on Max Twig, but he won't get that done and he'll be slow all the way up Mountain Straight. A bit surprised with Patrizzi, to tell you the truth. I thought on, with four green tyres on that car, he'd be, or, or the four fresh tyres on that car, he'd certainly be uh, be fighting for this win. Here he is on board, the Ausdrill on-site Porsche, and he's not driving in the 1000 this afternoon. He's very vocal during the year about co-drives, and he would only take one if he could get one that he felt was a competitive option. And, wasn't able to put together a deal, so instead has focused on this Porsche Carrera Cup program. He's part of the McElroy Racing Team on the Gold Coast, so he's teammates with Warren Luff and also with Tony Walls and Renee Gracie, the 18-year-old in the Fujitsu Porsche, who's having her first start at Bathurst. She's down the tail of the field, but she's chipping away at her lap times. It's a very imposing place to come to for the very first time in such a fast race car as a, a Porsche GT3. But the good thing is, that on the Michelin slicks, everything's up to temperature now, all nice and warm. Oh, you see Warren Life just locking inside wheel there on the tipping that car into the, uh, into the forest elbow. A lot of these corners on this circuit are off cambered or they drop away or you know, different things happen. And so getting the car braked straight, pulled up, and being able to turn it in, especially when you're pushing, pushing, trying to catch a car in front is not always the easiest thing to do. Saw a quick shot there of Rusty French, who's been racing Carrera Cup this weekend, but has withdrawn from this third and final race. Of course, he co-owns Ford Performance Racing with Rod Nash, a driver himself of many years here in the Bathurst 1000. But this is the end of lap five. It's starting to close in. Richards is catching. Patrick is catching everybody. But Baird still has track position. He leads the way. 11-1-9 that time. 2-11. Point five for Luff, Richards 11-2, Patrizzi at 10-8. He's got time here to make a race of this. He has, he just can't make any mistakes. And I think what really hurt Luff then was that lock break. He missed the apex coming onto the uh, Conrad straight and when you do that, you just, it's money for jam. You know, you can't do anything to make the thing go faster in a straight line other than press the throttle pedal hard against the floor. And, and when you don't get your apex right and it's not a smooth run, you pay that price all the way down the straight. And I think it probably cost him three or four tenths of a second on that lap. We talked about the tyre situation. Each car has eight tyres to play with for qualifying in the three races. But it's a bit different from V8 supercars in terms of Carrera Cup cars because the front and rear tyres are different sizes. You can't obviously rotate them as easily as you can on a V8 supercar where all four are, could be on any corner of the car. That's very true, and they have tyres that are more suited to drive and tyres that are more suited to steer. So, so uh, you know, Michelin do a fantastic job with these cars, and uh, and in some ways, what you say it limits what you can do with the tyres. But on the other side, you know, you've got you've got steer and drive tyres, and uh, uh, and it's I think it's always good in a category when you're just a little bit short on tyres, and it adds to the strategy. So you can, if you have a bad run in the first race, we see a brake locked up in front of us here then uh, you can do something about it a little bit later on. He's taken another couple of tenths to the first sector.
come over that hump on Conrod straight into the chase. Use all of that little bit extra bitumen on the run in. And because they're stiffly sprung, they really don't like bumps and they're not easy flat. Look at this big moment here. Shay Davies. Whoa, that thing is airborne. That's a massive off. He's lucky. He's so lucky. And have a look at that, that rear tyre on that car. Has that let go? It's off the rim. It is so off the rim now. I think I think he might have that might have let go. That's what started his problem off. Well, well, either it was off the rim and it forced him to go off, or it happened after it's he was bounced off. It's off hard the to rim. Tell. Yeah, but there wasn't really that lateral load. I think that would tend to do that after the moment. So, um, luckily though, he was past the turning point to the chase. Let's have, Let's have a look, look again. He's jumped on the brakes. Things just turned to the left. Pretty uh, to the left. Those last couple of bumps might have been enough to pull that rear tyre off the rim, but I suspect he was in a fair bit of trouble before that. He was lucky that there was no one really in front or behind where he was on the road. He, he had free racetrack to play with and grass and sand and everything else. Bang. That's taken a big hit. Look, airborne. The nose going up. Oh. At least you know he's got his foot on the brake. <laughs> Not helping when the wheels aren't on the deck. <laughs> Absolutely, that's true. And then it rises again. Great. Super slow-mo. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm sure Shay's not thinking that right about now. Patrizzi's continuing on his pace at the front. He's caught Richards, but this will be the final lap. So Warren Luff, second place. On target to win the round. What a way to start the day before the Super Chief Auto Bathurst 1000. Remember, we finished on the podium here last year with Craig Lowndes, and Lowndes is chasing his 12th Bathurst podium today, which would tie him with Brock, Richards, and Perkins. Unbelievable company if he can get there. But final time down, Conrod and Craig Baird, again, he's done the job. Well, you've got to give it to him. He's, uh, he's the king of Porsche, and he's done it again. This is a, you know, the last real passing opportunity. He's just put that little gap over Warren Luff again. Michael Patrese is going to run out of lap stand up on the podium in this particular event. So it'll be three different race winners for the three races. Porsche Carrera Cup has started again at Bathurst and Craig Baird finishes it off in style. But well done, Warren Luff. He wins his first round in Porsche Carrera Cup. And that is a great way to start a massive Sunday at the mountain. Stephen Richards is home in third spot. Really nice entree to the main dish this afternoon. Sound was great, great cars and uh, well driven. Elite class winner is Adam Gowans. Max Twig next home in position six. Nick Perkett did start to make a few more spots back. He finished in eighth. Shane Smolin and Damien Flack rounded out the ten. The Carrera Cup will be decided on the streets of the Gold Coast.